Good morning, everyone. So on uh, Wednesday in the session when we were doing the errors and suspense accounts, I told you that I will send you a video for the task one because it is a little bit trickier than the other task. So here we go. So let's first read through the question. Okay. So you work for Bins for You Limited, a company that makes and sells glasses. You have been provided with an extended trial balance that has been started by the current bookkeeper. However, he left unexpectedly and the owner of Bins for You Limited has asked that you create the adjustments and enter them into the extended trial balance. So you need to do double entries for various adjustments. Okay. So before this, a suspense account has been opened with a credit balance of 10,925. You need to make some corrections and adjustments for the year ended 31st May. So please notice that the year year end is going to be 31st of May. They already created a suspense account with a credit balance of 10,925. So when you make all your error corrections, your suspense account balance should become zero. Some corrections and adjustments are the so that's 31st of May. A payment of 275 for printer cartridges and paper, which means it is admin expenses, has been made from bank. The correct entry was made to the bank, but no other entries were made. So you bought some uh, printer and uh, cartridges and paper and they said that it is admin expenses. You made the payment from the bank. The correct entry has been made to the bank but no other entries were made. So you already recorded it into the bank but you did not put it into the admin expenses account. So you know that the error has only been done one side. Admin expenses is an expenditure so admin expenses account will be debited and because bank is already credited you will credit the suspense account. Okay. So let's write the double entry for that. So admin expenses account will be debited one minute let me just put a word text box in here so admin expenses account has been debited with 275 and then suspense account will be credited with 275 you might get more than one sus one entry in the suspense account here so you can add them up as you go on okay so i'll write here 275 so that's the first adjustment so you paid admin expenses but you only entered it in the bank but did not put into the admin expenses account so due to that admin expenses account has been debited and suspense account has been credited let's look into the second double entry notice has been received for the liquidation of cat limited the trade receivables account shows a balance of 245. There is no, is there any, did they ask you any VAT? 245. They did not say it is including VAT or plus VAT for this particular task. So you can ignore VAT for this. So notice has been received for the liquidation of CAT Limited. Liquidation means this company is closing down okay and they said it is a trade receivable account which means he is a customer okay so this customer who owes you 245 pounds has been liquidated liquidated means he is closing his business so he is not going to pay the money back to you you just received this notice that means you haven't entered it at all so you need to record the double entry and as you know for a recoverable debt the double entry Irrecoverable debt account should be debited and SLCA should be credited. So let's see if we have those accounts over here. Irrecoverable debts account should be debited and SLCA or trade receivables account should be credited. So we have your irrecoverable debts account over here. And then we have the trade receivables account which needs to be credited. I just need to look at the amount again. How much is the amount? So let's go back. It's 245. So this 245 is now going to be declared as a irrecoverable debt. So 245 in the irrecoverable debts account on the debit side because you are losing this money. And 245 in the SLCA or the receivable account because the asset value is decreasing. 
that is your second double entry let's look at the third one third double entry says the figures from the columns of the sales day book for 15th april have been totaled correctly as follows so you got a sales day book and the items have been totaled correctly so sales account is 32000 vat is 5600 and the total is 37600 as you know the double entry sales and vat account should be debited and slca should be sorry sales and vat account should be credited and slca should be debited but here slca has been debited which is right sales has been credited which is right but if you see the VAT account has been debited so you need to credit the VAT account but instead of crediting it they have debited it so whenever they do the other way the transaction to correct the transaction we need to use double the amount okay so double the amount of 5600 is going to be 11200 so VAT account will be credited with 11200 and because you only done the mistake in the VAT account and in nothing else, the suspense account will be debited by 11,200. So VAT account is credited by 11,200 and suspense account will be debited by 11,200. The reason why we are using 11,200 is because 5,600 was put it on the debit side. So if you just put 5600 again on the credit side, it will just remove the error, but it will not make the correction. So because of that, you need to put double the amount. So 11200 on the debit side and 11200 on the credit side. VAT account is credited because sales VAT should be on the credit side. And because there is no other mistake done, the suspense account has been debited with 11200 let's look at the next double entry provision for doubtful debts is to be adjusted to 5% of the outstanding receivables okay provision is nothing but allowance okay so they want you to calculate allowance for doubtful debts which is 5% of the receivable balance but you need to remember that before the calculation of the allowance there is a irrecoverable debt so first you need to remove the irrecoverable debt and then you calculate the allowance. So your receivables balance is 10,745 and then on that you already have 245 of irrecoverable debt. Okay, so first subtract that 10,745 minus 245. See how much you will get. I think it should be 10,100 but just checking that 10,500. So your allowance, your receivable balance currently is 10,500. On that you need to calculate 5% for the allowance. So let's calculate 5% on that. So I got a new allowance of 525. Okay, so this is my new allowance which I have calculated which is 525. Please notice in the question if there is any old existing allowance. You can see allowance for receivables, allowance for doubtful lips, same as is 1040. So your old allowance is 1040. I'm trying to move it up, but it's moving down. I don't know why. Okay. So your new allowance is 525, but your old allowance is 1040. So you can see that the allowance is decreasing by see the difference 10 1040 minus 525 515 okay so i'm just remo explaining that again your receivable balance is 10725 same as the slca from that before you calculate any new relevance you need to remove the irrecoverable debt irrecoverable debt was 245 so 10745 minus 245 my new slca or the receivable balance is 10500 on that i calculated 5% as my allowance which came to me as 525 
this is the new elements in the trial balance you can see that there is an existing old elements of 1040 instead of calling it elements for doubtful depths they call it as elements for receivables which is the same thing so old elements is 1040 new elements is 525 so that means your elements is decreasing by 515 so when elements decreases elements per receivables account will be debited and elements per doubtful debts account adjustment should be credited so over here elements for doubtful debts account will be debited by 515 just going to make the, the box a little bit bigger to see the value and then elements for doubtful debts adjustment they should be in a different name over here yeah there it is elements for receivables adjustment and this account over here should be credited with 515 can't seem to draw a box there are too many boxes here let's try again okay so that's 515 I'm going to reduce the size a little bit so that you can see the figure currently So because the allowance is decreasing, allowance for doubtful debts adjustment account has been credited and allowance for doubtful debts account has been debited. Only thing is instead of calling allowance for doubtful debts, they are calling it as allowance for receivables, but it is the same thing. This is a question from the old question paper, so that's why the terminology is a little bit different. Now let's look at the next adjustment. Rent is payable yearly in advance. For 12 months to 31st of March 2007, the rent is 7000. So you pay rent until 31st of March 2007. But you can see your business is ending on 31st May 2006. So your financial year is ending on May 2006, but you paid rent until March 2007. So that means there is some prepayment over here. You paid expenses in advance. So to find out how much you paid in advance, you need to see how many months you paid in advance. So your business is ending in May 2006, whereas you paid until March 2007. So let's calculate the months. Ignore the May because your ABA is ending on 31st of May. So that's June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. March so you made a prepayment of 10 months in total so they say for 12 months it is 6000 so calculate how much it is going to be for 10 months okay so I'll show the calculation here so 6000 times 10 divided by 12 so that is a 10 months prepayment because your business is ending in the month of May whereas you paid the rent until March 2007 so you made 10 months payment in advance so times 10 divided by 12 will give you 5000 so this is a prepayment of 5000 and as we discussed the double entry for this on it on uh, Wednesday double entry for prepayment prepayment is an asset because you don't have to pay these expenses anymore so prepayment account should be debited and the related expenditure account should be credited because the expenditure is going to decrease so prepayment account is debited and related expenditure over here is rent so rent account should be credited so let's see where is our prepayment account yep there we go so prepayment account is debited by 5000 which is the value of your prepayment and rent account is credited because this rent is not related to the current year and you paid for rent for the next year in advance so rent account has been credited so prepayment account has been debited because it is an asset and rent account has been credited because it is decreasing the value of your expenses inventory is valued at 18,000 
sorry let me just put the box for the calculations here okay so inventory is valued inventory is nothing but your closing inventory is valued at 18,412 however items were sold after the year end for 2,902 that originally only cost them 3,519 so some items which were costing 3,519 were only sold for 2,902 they just given the value the other way around so some goods which were costing 3,519 has now only been sold for 2,902 so calculate the new value of the closing stock okay so the new value 18,412 minus 3,519 plus 2,902 the new value of the closing stock is 17,795 this is a net realizable value 17,795 whereas your cost is 18,412 and as you know according to IAS2 you only record the lowest value so lowest value is 17,795 so this one will become the value of your closing inventory double entry closing inventory SPL will be credited and closing inventory SOFP will be debited but if you see here very often they will only give you one column for closing inventory so they will not give you two accounts okay so you need to debit and credit the same account but when you are transferring them the debit value will be transferred to the SOFP and the credit value will be transferred to the SPL so the closing inventory they did not give you two separate accounts for S SPL and SOFP so the single account whatever has been given to you will be both debited and credited and then when you are transferring them into the SPL and SOFP one value will go into the SPL and one value will go into the SOFP if they give you two closing inventories SPL and SOFP you can do that accordingly but where they have only given you one account you debit and credit the same account and then while transferring the credit value will go into the SPL and the debit value will go into the SOFP okay so that is your closing inventory debited and credited at the lowest value the last one water bill for three months ended 31st July 2017 was received and paid in August 2007 the bill was 180 so let's see first of all if it is a prepayment or a accrual so water bill for three months ended 31st July three months ended 31st July means that is May June and July so for three months it is 180 pounds that means for each month it is going to be 60 pounds okay but this was paid in the month of August okay that means your year end is May by May 31st 2016 it was not paid which means it is a accrual but it is only an accrual for one month because your year is ending in the month of May so that means June and July are not part of your financial year so only accrued for one month the reason for that is as I said your year is ending in the month of May so June and July are already in the next financial year so you don't have to worry what is happening in the next financial year you only think by the end of 31st May is it paid or not paid so this bill for May June and July was paid in August 2007 which means in the next financial year so by the time in May when you have ended your business the bill for the May was not been paid so only that one month amount will become your accrual so accrual for one month for three months if it is 180 so for one month it is going to be 60 pounds double entry because you haven't paid this bill accrual is a liability so accrual will be credited 
and the relevant expenditure should be debited which over here is water okay so accrual is credited because it is a liability so we put it on the credit side 60 pounds over here and the related expenditure should be debited which over here should be water over here we can see that water and the water account will be debited by 60 pounds because even though you did not pay it this is still expenditure related to the current year so you need to add it so that is all the adjustments completed now let's see if we can balance your suspense account or not okay so your suspense account has 10,925 on the credit side and we have one more 275 on the credit side okay so let's see how much is the total on the credit side 10,925 plus 275 so on the credit side you have now 11,200 and on the debit side also you have 11,200 which means the suspense account balance will become zero okay i'm just going to write that calculation over here for you to understand because i don't have much space over here so i'll just draw a small t account so this is my suspense account okay so let's give it a try on the credit side you have 10,925 and then you have one more adjustment over there which is for 275 so you had two items on your credit side now according to the adjustments you also have 11,200 on the debit side so put one more on the debit side 11,200 so when you balance it you have 11,200 on the debit side and then 11,200 on the credit side which means there is no remaining balance in your suspense account which means the suspense account was successfully closed the last step to finish it is to make sure you total the debit and the credit columns okay so let's do that so first value you have on the debit side is 275 then 515 then 17795 then 60 and let's scroll down and 5000 then 245 and then 11200 on the debit side my total is 35,090 pounds okay so my total on the debit side is 35,090 pence now let me check the total on the credit side also so on the credit side I have 60 plus 17,795 plus scroll down 5000 plus 245 plus 11200 plus 515 plus 275 which is also giving me a total of 35,090 what is very important to remember is anytime you are doing any adjustments you have to make sure you record the double entry for the adjustment don't just put on one debit side and credit side and leave it okay you have to do both the double entries okay like accruals accrual was credited expenditure was debited prepayment prepayment was debited expenditure was credited allowance for doubtful debts allowance for doubtful debts was debited allowance for doubtful debts adjustment was credited irrecoverable debt irrecoverable debt is debited slca or trade receivables have been credited VAT again you corrected VAT was credited because there was no other account suspense account was debited so any time you record an adjustment there should always be a double entry for the adjustment 
and once all the adjustments are completed the suspense account balance should become zero that is when you know your answers are right and the total of your adjustment columns should always match okay so that is the explanation of the task one from the errors and suspense account questions which were given on wednesday now your homework today and throughout this half term will be to complete all the remaining questions from this errors and suspense account i think you have like four more questions remaining and most probably by monday or most probably by the end of today i will send you the answers also for the remaining questions so please cross check your answers so that you know if you did it correctly or not thank you guys